Welcome to my zone online school. My name is Linda Chipanga and welcome to my friend. Today's lesson is grade 7 science. But before we start with our lesson, remember to put on your mask and let's also sanitize our hands. Let's rub it through our fingers and around our hands. And also do not forget the social distance on the sides and to the front as well. Now, today's lesson is health education, sexuality, and sexual health. Please turn to page 23. Health education, sexuality, and sexual health. Now, let's quickly look at our competencies. Identify from diagrams the different stages of sexual development from infancy to old age. Investigate and report on different sources of information and support about sexual health and sexuality. Explain what constitutes sexual health, be it physical or emotional. Explain why sexual health is important. Now the vocabulary. Sexuality. Sexuality is the physical and emotional readiness for sexual intercourse. Sexual health. Being physically, mentally, socially healthy in relation to sexuality. Let's turn to page 24, where we have different diagrams or pictures on the stages of the human development. Now, on the chalkboard, we have different stages of sexual development. The first stage is a baby or infant, and then we have the childhood. The next stage is the adolescent. And the next stage will be the adulthood, as you can see. And the last stage is the old age. Now, let's move on to the sources of information and support about sexual health and sexuality. You know, as young uh, children, as adolescents, you need to have information on sexual health and your sexuality. But your friends are not really that well equipped with information. So you need to visit different places that can offer you with good quality information. These places, we call them the sources of information on sexuality and sexual health. Now, these places are the clinics and hospitals, the lifeline and child line, the woman and child protection unit. Now we are moving on to what constitutes sexual health, be it physical or emotional. What constitutes sexual health, you, should, you shouldn't only be physically healthy, be it you preventing yourself from getting STDs or sexually transmitted diseases. It should, you should also have a positive and a respectful approach to sexuality and sexual relationships. That's basically what constitutes sexual health. Now, why is it important for you to be healthy sexually? So that you can live a happy life, to avoid getting infections, and to avoid unwanted pregnancies. Let's turn to page 25. On page 25, you can find your activity. This is activity one. Number one, identify the stages of sexual development from the diagrams below. You should just fill in the, sp in the spaces provided. Number two, explain why sexual health is important. I hope you have enjoyed your, this lesson. And please remember to sanitize your hands and always put on your mask. So goodbye. Hi everyone, I'm Joshi. And make sure to always make a helicopter circle stretching your arms out and spinning around like me. And make sure you're not touching anyone while doing this. Goodbye.
Hello, welcome to my Zone Online School. My name is Linda Shipanga, and I'm not alone. I'm with Pomwene. Welcome, Pomwene. And let's always remember to put on our masks. And we should always sanitize our hands in between the fingers as well. And do not forget the social distance. So today's lesson will be, uh, it's science grade seven, health education, sexuality, and sexual health. All right, let's turn to page 23, where we'll be looking at our basic competencies. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to discuss and compare methods of maintaining sexual health. And you should, be, uh, you should be able to identify risky sexual practices. And you should also be able to describe the impact of risky sexual practices on the individual, family, community, and society. Now, the vocabulary, these are the words that you have to, the new words that you have to learn. Risky, the word risky means involving the possibility of something bad happening. Impact, the influence that, so that one thing has on something else. To maintain means to keep something. Now let's look at the methods of maintaining sexual health. As you can see on the chalkboard, we have different um, there are pictures on different methods of maintaining sexual health. The first one is abstinence. To abstain basically meaning to say no to sex. To all these uh, sexual activities, you should totally abstain, you should totally say no. And then we move to the next one, is faithfulness. You must be faithful to one trustable partner. In this method of maintaining sexual health, if one or both of the partners are not faithful to each other, and then they have sexual intercourse with somebody else, which is, for example, unprotected sex, then they can contract an STD or STI, which is sexually transmitted infections, and then they can pass it on to their partner. So this faithfulness is mostly suitable for married couples. And then we move to condom use. So we have different types of condoms. You can find the condoms at the clinics or hospitals. And then we have two types of condoms for male, male condoms, and the female condoms, which are called the femidoms. So you can still make use of the condoms. The condoms act as a barrier between the two partners. Just the same way as the doctors are putting on uh, gloves to protect themselves and their patients from getting gems, it's, it works the same way. So the condoms trap spams so that they do not go to the next person. They, the, the spams do not enter the woman, so she will not be able to contract any infections, and then she will not be able to fall pregnant. Among these three methods of maintaining sexual health, Abstinence is the best and the most effective method. And you should actually abs abs abstain. All right? Now, let's quickly turn to page 24. Where, where, whereby we'll be looking at the risky sexual practices. What are risky sexual practices? These are actions that put you in danger and that have a negative impact on your sexual health. What are, these sexual, uh, what are these risky sexual practices? Sex without a condom. Multiple sexual partners. When you have more than one sexual partner, for a boy, maybe you have three, uh, three girlfriends, or for a girl, you have maybe two boyfriends, for instance, and you are having sexual intercourse with all of them. Those are multiple sexual partners. Sugar daddies and sugar mummies. Let's look at the sugar daddies. What are sugar daddies? Sugar daddies are older men, much older men, that usually engage into sexual relationships with much younger girls. They give them money and they give them gifts and they have sexual intercourse with them. Sugar mummies, sugar mummies are, are older, much older ladies that have sexual intercourse or sexual relationship with much younger boys and they give them gifts they give them uh, money 
and all sorts kind of things. They, sometimes they even give them a lift to school in their cars. And then we look at the sex workers. Sex workers, these are people that sell sex for money. They go at the lights, for example, the, uh, the robots there, and then they find men, they get into their cars uh, according uh, to what they have agreed on, and then they get into men's cars, Oh, yeah, and then when they go to their place, have sexual intercourse with them, and then they get paid for having sexual intercourse with different kind of men. And those activities are very risky because now you are having sex with this person, having sex with another person. Imagine you having sexual intercourse with five different kind of people. It will be so difficult to tell each one to put on a condom. Okay, you come to this one, put on a condom, put it at the end of the day. You are like, oh, I'm getting used to this one now. And then you, it's not always easy to convince now each and every person to use a condom. At the end of the day, you might just end up having unprotected sexual intercourse. And then that's really, really risky. Let's move on to the impacts. These are physical and emotional impacts of risky sexual practices on the individual, on the family, community, and society. When you engage in these risky sexual practices, it doesn't only affect you, it affects your family, it affects the, the community and the, just the society at large, your neighbors. What are the physical impacts? Death, you can die. When you contract uh, diseases like HIV, you might die. And then uh, it also leads to spreading of diseases. You pass the disease to this person and then to the next person just like that. It also leads to unwanted preg pregnancies. And the other impact as well are looking after a baby of a sick person. Now you are sick, your parents or your neighbors or just your family members have to look after, after that baby because you are sick. Or when you have died, now people have to look after your children or your baby when you have died. It can be the community, yes, or your family members. Now what are the emotional impacts? This is the head of feelings when you are, uh, for example, when you are sick, it, it affects people. People are hurt. Everybody's thinking about it and it, it, it affects them uh, really badly. Okay? So now that's our lesson uh, on, on different kinds of methods of maintaining sexual health, risky sexual practices, and the physical and emotional impacts. Okay? So you should be able to do this activity on page 25. Quickly go to page 25 so that we can look at this activity. A. Discuss and compare methods of maintaining sexual health. Discuss and compare methods of maintaining sexual health. Those are three methods that are, I want you to answer there. And B. Identify risky sexual practices. C. Describe the impact, be it physical and emotional altogether. These are the impact of risky sexual practices on the individual, on the family, community, and society. Okay, let's quickly recap on our lesson for today, which is sexual health. And then we looked at the methods of maintaining sexual health. It is abstinence, faithfulness, and condom use. And the risky sexual practices are sex without a condom, multiple sexual partners, sugar daddies and sugar mummies, sex workers. The impacts, or, or be it physical or emotional, of the risky sexual practices on the family, individual, community, and society it can lead to death, spreading of diseases, unwanted pregnancies, and look, looking after a baby of a sick person or a dead person. And this can also lead to hurt of feelings of family members and just the community at large. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. So let's not forget to always wear our masks, sanitize, and then do not remember the social distance. As from me and Pomene, it's goodbye. Hi everyone, I'm Shashi and Simon says
says, don't touch your face, your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. Unless your hands are super clean. Bye! Prevention is important. Help prevent the spread of illness and keep yourself and others well. Hand washing is one of the most effective ways of preventing the spread of germs. Wash your hands regularly with soap and hot water, scrubbing your hands thoroughly for at least 20 seconds. Hand sanitizers can be used but are not recommended as a substitute for hand washing. Use sanitizers in addition to hand washing or in a situation where soap and water are not available. To avoid spreading germs, limit sharing of personal items such as utensils, cups, and dishes. Your skin acts as a barrier to germs, but your eyes, nose, and mouth are more vulnerable. Wash your hands thoroughly before touching your face, eating, or drinking. Avoid physical contact with others, including handshakes, fist bumps, high fives, hugs, and kisses. 
Social distancing is deliberately increasing the physical space between people to avoid spreading germs. While regulations may vary by country or area, the best guideline for social distancing is to maintain a distance of six feet from others. Germs can travel through the air from one person to another. If you sneeze or cough, do so into a tissue or the inside of your elbow to prevent the spread of germs. Avoid contact with ill individuals and insist they isolate themselves until they have recovered and are symptom free. Clean and sanitize frequently touched common surfaces and high traffic areas in your home and workplace several times a day. Share these guidelines with others and help prevent the spread of illness and maintain a healthy environment. An ounce of prevention is worth a ton of cure. Slave to sin, I'm free. Look at the documents. I got an acre in Jesus, my hero. <laughs> Look at the monuments. I am a part of the family tree. Yeah, one of the occupants. He paid the price of sin in full. Covered in monuments. Sometimes a fairy tale. Very well, but I know him very well. He is simple to get, but deep, like hundreds of buried wells. He's got a name known to man. His name is Emmanuel. I am no longer a slave to fear. I got the manual. Look, I am no longer a slave to sin. Why? He's got the manual.
all the pain and all the struggles They gotta really love you You never let my side, I wanna embrace you, I wanna hug you The devil is a liar, his tongue is so deceitful I used to have a lot of fear, they God, you the greatest I know, I know God